going to do a little role play to um, just show you what this process looks like in terms of conflict in relationship, what it looks like to deal with conflict with this process and what it looks like to deal with oneself with this process. Um, now, before I do that, let me just say a couple more things about the, the wounded self. One of the things that we do in our child adult state is that we tend to treat ourselves in the ways that we were treated by our parents, which is usually authoritarian or permissive. So that the authoritarian inner parent is critical and judgmental, you did it wrong, you never do it right, what's the matter with you? And the permissive inner parent is the one that just, um, oh, you feel like hitting somebody, go ahead. You feel like having a hot fried Sunday for breakfast? Go ahead. You feel like binging out? Why not? No limits, no, um, no boundaries regarding how we treat ourselves and how we treat other people. And so that wounded part of us tends to vacillate back and forth between authoritarian and permissive because that's basically what we got in our households and that, that was our, our role modeling. So let's take a situation here. Let's say that I'm in a relationship with a man who is upset with me for not spending enough time with him. Let's say that's the situation. I run into that a lot with my clients where one person or the other is, is, is upset that the person doesn't spend enough time with them. So let's say that I, I come in and, and he's upset with me. He's not in an open place. He's in a closed place and he's attacking me. He's in his wounded state and he's saying, you know, we never spend time together anymore. What, do, what did I get married for? I mean, I didn't get married just to be alone. You know, you've got a time management problem. I don't think you love me anymore. There's really something wrong with you. I mean, what is it with you? You say you love me, but you're not here, and you don't spend time with me, and you're always busy, and everything's more important than I am. And he's attacking and he's blaming from his wounded self. Now, if I'm going to come from my authoritarian, wounded self, my authoritarian child adult, on the inner level, I'm going to be very critical. I'm going to think it's my fault. Everything's my fault, and I'm going to be coming down on myself and saying to myself, oh, you did it wrong again, and now he's mad at you, and it's your fault because you don't manage time, and now he thinks we don't love him, and we've got to do something about this. And on the outer level, I'm likely to be compliant, so that on the outer level, I may say from my wounded state, oh, 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 honey, I, I really do love you. Please don't think it's that I don't love you. It's just that I've, I've been so busy. You're very important to me. And we can spend time together now, OK? And don't, don't, don't be mad. Don't, don't yell at me. I, I really love you. And yeah, I'll, I'll take a time management class, OK? And I'm going to be compliant as my way to try and control his not being angry with me. Now, if on the inner level I have a permissive parent, that means that I don't have any dialogue. There's no adult that shows up at all. It's just this wounded child who's reacting with fight or flight. In this case, it's going to be fight. And I'm going to come back to him in the very same way that he's coming at me, which is, who do you think you are? You know, are you a baby? You can't spend any time alone? I'm not your mom. I mean, I was just gone a little while. I spent plenty of time with you. What are you talking about, time management? You need therapy, you know? You just can't be alone. And I'm going to come at him in the same way that he's coming at me, with the blame and the attack. If, however, I have done my work, and I have a loving adult here who is able to really stay connected and take care of me. I'm going to do what we're going to be actually working with a lot, which is two skills that are very, very important in conflict. And one is the intention to learn, and the other is setting a boundary. And I've discovered that there's only these two skills that will help us in conflict resolution. So here's what this would look like. I would approach him with an intention to learn, as well as setting a boundary. And I might say, honey, I can see that you're really, really upset. And I know that you have some very, very good reasons for being upset. And I would really like to explore this with you, because I, too, have some very good reasons for what I've been doing. And if you'd like to explore with me, I, I'd be more than happy to take a look at this issue with you. But I really don't want to be yelled at and blamed. That just feels awful when you yell at me and blame me. So what I've done is I've opened the door to learning, as well as set a boundary against the attack. Now, just because I do that doesn't mean that he opens, because I have no control over his intention. 
he may say to me, oh, honey, I'm sorry, you're right. Um, let, let's sit down and talk about this. I, I really would like to explore the issue. Great. Now we've got an arena and we can both learn. But he's just as likely to say, don't give me that psychobabble. There is nothing for me to learn about here. This is your issue. This is your problem. There is nothing to discuss. Just resolve your problem here. He might say that. In which case, I now need to act on the boundary. And I need to say to him, as I said to you, I am not willing to be treated this way. And when you're available to talk to me, let me know. But meanwhile, I'm going to go in the other room. And I'm now disengaging. I am taking care of my child. I am not letting her be in this line of fire. I'm not going to, I'm not going to defend. I'm not going to blame. I am just going to take care of my child, which means there's no point in this discussion if he's not open. And so I'm going to set the boundary by saying I'm not available to being treated this way, and I'm going to leave. Now, just because he's not going to discuss with me does not mean that I am not free to do my own work. Now it's time for me to do my six steps of inner bonding. So I go by myself, and either in writing or out loud, I'm going to do my own inner bonding process. And what this may look like is something like this. One of the reasons that we use a, a doll or a bear is it makes it a lot easier to differentiate. And also, lots of times, the child needs comfort. And believe it or not, holding um, a child like this or like this gives us a lot of comfort a lot more than if we don't have something to hold on to. So I'm going to do my, my dialogue process. I'm going to, number one, be willing, go into willingness to take responsibility. I may be feeling anxious or tense inside. And I'm going to be now willing to take responsibility. I'm going to open to my higher guidance. I'm going to do a little prayer. I'm going to ask for my guidance to come into my heart and make sure that my heart is open. And then I'm going to say to my child, because I can feel something's going on in here, what are you, what's going on? What are you feeling right now? And then I'm going to move down inside and let myself become the feelings. Because we want to move out of the head as part of this process and down into the body and become the feelings. And I may go inside and I may say, you know, I just feel so sad that he's closed off to me. I feel so sad that he's yelling at me. I just feel very lonely when I'm with him. I, I just can't seem to connect to him. And I, you know, I love him. I want to be with him and I want to share with him. But it's not fun when he's so angry and blaming and shut off to me. I don't, I don't want to be yelled at like this. I, it just makes me feel so, so bad. And I might say, oh, I really, really understand. I can feel how awful that feels to you because I know how much you love him and how much you would like to spend loving time with him and how bad it feels that he doesn't seem to be open to us a lot. And then I might go up to, and this is a very brief example, I might go up to my higher guidance and I might say, well, what is the loving action to my child in this situation? What do I need to be doing? to take care of my child, given this situation. And I might hear from my guidance that I need to, um, that I need to really speak my truth here with him about spending time with him. That, that it sounds like my child is saying, I don't, the reason I don't want to spend time with him is because he's not open a lot of the time. And I feel too lonely when I'm around him. And I don't want to keep going through this. And so maybe I need to say something to him. I need to speak up. And I need to let him know that I'm really not going to be spending time with him until he chooses to be more loving 